At 2 a.m. on 22nd June, America's B-2 bomber silently enters Iranian airspace. This bomber aircraft is based on stealth technology, which makes it difficult to detect on radar. It launches multiple GBU-57 bunker buster bombs on Iran's nuclear sites. This strike primarily destroys the nuclear facilities at Fordo, Natanz, and Isfahan. If we look at it, the one-sided distance between America and Iran is around 12,000 kilometers. So how did this bomber cover such a distance while keeping its flight path hidden from the entire world? On the morning of 21st June, B-2 Spirit stealth bombers take off from Whiteman Air Force Base, carrying GBU-57 bombs. They cross the Atlantic Ocean and pass near Southern Europe, because if they had entered Russian airspace, they could have been detected, especially at a time when Russia and China were fully alert regarding America's airspace movements. Using the airspace of either Saudi Arabia or Iraq, these fighter planes reach above the Persian Gulf, where they undergo mid-air refueling. For this, KC-135 Stratotankers are already available in the airspace in advance. According to reports, the Indian Ocean was also included in the operation, from where some B-2 bombers take off and reach the Persian Gulf. After this, all these planes pass near Pakistan, enter Iranian airspace, and target all three nuclear sites. The Fordo site is considered the most important because it is located in a hilly region and is built at a depth of 80 to 90 meters. This site houses uranium enrichment facilities, which are seen as a step towards the development of nuclear bombs. The second site is Natanz, which is situated 40 to 50 meters below ground level. Around 15,000 centrifuges are installed here that are enriching uranium. To make a nuclear bomb, uranium is enriched, meaning it is purified up to 90%. According to reports, Iran has already achieved 60% enrichment. The third site is Isfahan, where nuclear reactors are installed and research processes are ongoing. This site is located on the surface. When the US B-2 bombers reach the target location, they freely drop the GBU-57 bombs in mid-air. These bombs are extremely heavy, which is why a single B-2 bomber can carry only two bombs at a time. The total weight of the GBU-57 is 14,000 kilograms, or 14 tons. If compared to a human, it measures around 20.5 feet in length and has a diameter of 31.5 inches. Due to its heavy weight, it can penetrate up to 60 meters into the ground, roughly equal to the depth of a 20-story building. Israel, too, had been waiting for this bomb because its own GBU-28 laser-guided bunker buster bomb weighs only 2,300 kilograms and can penetrate only up to 6 meters, whereas the enemy's bunkers in Israel are located as deep as 90 meters underground. When the B-2 bomber drops this bomb, it is released from a very high altitude because it doesn't use any thrusters. The bomb maintains its speed and stability purely because of its own weight. Missiles are fitted with thrusters that propel them towards the target, but the GBU-57 doesn't have any such system. Instead, it is equipped with GPS and INS systems at the back, which guide it towards the target as it falls through the air. These systems send data to motor-controlled fins at the rear, which adjust in real time to guide the bomb accurately in the correct direction. As the bomb falls from such a great height, it gains tremendous kinetic energy. It's a simple concept. When a 14-ton object this heavy drops from the sky, it can penetrate deep into the ground. But that's only possible if the body of the bomb is strong enough. If the bomb's body isn't strong, it will explode immediately upon hitting the surface and will never reach the depth of the bunker. Bunkers are specifically built using reinforced concrete, which is far stronger than a normal surface. That's why the body of the bomb is designed in such a way that it can pierce through this tough concrete structure and go deep inside. The body of the GBU-57 is made from a ferro-cobalt alloy, which gives it immense strength. Interestingly, around 80% of the bomb's total weight comes from its body alone. The remaining 20% consists of its internal equipment and the warhead. At the center of the bomb is its warhead, which weighs approximately 2,267 kilograms. Inside this warhead, there is an impact sensor and a time delay device, which prevent the bomb from exploding instantly upon hitting the surface. If we observe carefully, when a missile hits its target, the impact sensor at its front detects the collision and sends a signal to the detonator. The detonator then activates the warhead inside the missile, causing a massive explosion. However, in a bunker buster bomb, the process of the front-mounted impact sensor is slightly different. When this sensor strikes the surface, it doesn't trigger an immediate explosion. First, when the nose of the bomb hits the bunker, 
The inertial impact sensors on the front detect the impact and generate a first trigger signal. This signal indicates that contact has been made, but the explosion should not occur yet. This signal is then sent to the microcontroller and digital delay fuse, which immediately starts a timer after the impact. At the same time, it analyzes the impact force and depth. Sometimes it only activates the timer, for example, triggering the explosion exactly 150 milliseconds after impact. Now, as soon as the timer runs out, this signal reaches the detonator unit and activates it. This unit, using high voltage and current, generates a shock pulse that ignites the explosive content stored inside the bomb. As we have already discussed, the cover of this bomb is made of an extremely strong alloy. As a result, the warhead generates enormous pressure and temperature inside, and after a certain threshold, this strong metal finally breaks apart. After this, a powerful explosion takes place. But it is important to note that this bomb does not catch fire. Instead, it creates a shock wave through the blast, which is essentially a type of pressure wave. This wave generates such immense inward pressure that the structures inside the bunker begin to develop cracks. This shock wave is so powerful that in some cases, it even causes effects similar to an earthquake, completely destroying the bunker. If we observe carefully, even today, only the United States possesses the most powerful bunker buster bombs in the world. The first is the BLU-109, which was developed in the 1970s and could only destroy bunkers up to a depth of 1 to 2 meters. Then comes the GBU-28, which can penetrate to a depth of around 6 meters. And the most powerful of them all is the GBU-57, which can destroy bunkers buried as deep as 60 meters. Within just a few minutes, these B-2 bombers complete their mission and exit Iranian airspace. We hope you enjoyed our animation. To support us, you can subscribe to our channel. Thank you.